السلام علیکم جمعیان و رحمت اللہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ من اول الدنیا الى فنائها ومن الآخرة الى بقائها الحمد للہ على كل نعمة وأستغفر الله من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه وهو أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأطيبين الأنجبين بهم نتولى ومن أعدائهم نتبرع إلى الله اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد It is 1442 years after Hijrah of the Holy Prophet from Mecca to Medina and 1381 years since the Ashura of the 61st Hijrah. Despite the passage of time, the essence, the weight, the magnitude, the might, the message of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, every year it grows mightier, stronger than ever. And every year we see that it blossoms and every year we have new devotees, new adherents, new members, new ways that attract, Aba, to Aba, attract us to Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. And this year and this global shutdown is another medium, another way that we will be approaching Aba Abdullah al Hussein through a digital medium. And this is going to be a new experience and in fact a beautiful experience where we in our own space, in our own homes, in our own hearts, we will be connecting to Sayyid al-Shuhada Hussain ibn Ali alayhi salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ لِقَتْلِ الْحُسَيْنِ حَرَارَةٌ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَا تَبْرُدُ أَبَدًا There is a heat in the hearts of the Mu'mineen for the massacre and the murder of Aba Abdullah and Hussein which, will, which never cools down. And this is a fact. We see that every year that passes, people who are attracted and attached to Aba Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam, they are far more in number. Everyone who is lost, he finds himself and before the existence of Allah wa ta'ala in the majlis of Aba Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. For sins where we find no way to get forgiven, the outlet is Aba Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. These majalis that are held for Sayyid al-Shuhada, they are a special bonus, a special asset, a special way that Allah Taala He has placed to forgive His servants, to forgive His creation. An ayah in Quran says, قُلْ اَعْمَلُوا فَسَيَّرَ اللَّهُ وَعَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ do what you want, your amal, your actions. Indeed, Allah is watching. Indeed, Rasulullah is watching. And some of the mu'mineen, they have the access and they too are watching. A majlis that is held for Abu Abdullah and Hussein, the host of Aza, is Hazrat Fatima, salamullahi alayha. The host of Aza is Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi. And amazing benefits, amazing rewards are there for these majalis that are held for Aba Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. It is the night of the first majlis and we ask Allah Jalla wa'ala 
to not make this majlis of ours the last of our life and to make this one the best that were observed in love and in sorrow of Sayyid al-Shuhada Hussain ibn Ali alayhi salam. Now some etiquettes to observe being the night of the first, we have to be dressed in black and then every day to recite Ziyarat Ashura, Ashura, the full form of it, with the hundred la'an and salam and with the zia dua al qama which is after that. Now this has been the etiquette and adab of the noble that they observe, especially these first ten nights, starting from tonight. And then be dressed in black and whenever, wherever you will participate in the Majlis now if due to this lockdown if you are going to observe this Majlis in your own space in your own homes All the adab the etiquettes that you used to observe when you attended a Husseiniyah or a Masjid or a Matam All of that be observed even in our own homes Not multitasking holding various devices and gadgets in our hands and then with our own thoughts and wandering around no all that adab has to be observed and as if this ahtikaf is there between us and Ahlul Bayt and we will sit and we will mourn and then we resemble Imam Al Asr in that thing now although we don't have any resemblance with the Imam but when it comes to crying for Abba Abdullah crying for the Masaib of Hazrat Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha crying for the Masaib of Hazrat Zainab Salamullahi Alaiha there we can say that Imam we don't have any resemblance with you but these tears that you see on my face this sorrow that you see in me this grief that is within me that is something which is common between the two of us so that is something which Allah loves which Allah buys at a lavish price now these majalis that are held, they are all because of Amir al muminin and Hazrat Fatima Salamullahi alayhi And we see that it is that love that we have towards them as a result of which we come to the majlis of Abba Abdullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he says, لو اجتمع الناس على حب علي ابن أبي طالب لما خلق الله النار if people, if mankind, they had united upon the love of Ali alayhi salam, Allah would not have had created the fire. Now because people, they have not united under the banner of Amir al muminin and under the love of Amir al muminin then there is a fire also that is required for punishment. So give importance to these nights and special observances be observed and this month has to be different. And Allah wa ta'ala, he says that this aza it is nur and it will be that nur that will be given to us that will, that will help us pass the sirat in the hereafter. Crying for Abba Abdullah and Hussein has numerous benefits, numerous. And one of them, enough, as many as 40 benefits have been, effects have been listed by the ulama. And one of the effects that we see which is <coughs> great is in al buka al al Hussein yahut al dhunub al Adam that crying on Abu Abdul for Abu Abdullah al Hussein it removes some it removes the sins especially those sins that cannot be uh, that cannot be re reduced or removed easily sometimes you've got these different cleaners to remove some germs some acid or all these different <clears throat> detergents that we have but again we see that there are some stains that cannot be removed no matter what detergent and what cleaner you have says that this Aza of Abu Abdullah al Hussein is that cleaner which purifies and removes every wrong from the from the existence of an ind individual now in another report <clears throat> Imam al Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam he says that Nafasul Mahmoom Lidulmina Tasbih that is someone who is aggrieved due to this oppression upon us the Ahlul Bayt his sorrow or his breathing in this grief that is Tasbih and his striving towards this 
grief and attending these majalis, that is worship. That is what Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam says. And then he further says that this hadith should be written in gold. It carries so much of weight, that is nafasul mahmum, that is the breath of one aggrieved in our oppressions, it is his tasbih and his striving for us is worship. Now Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam, he observed these majalis himself. They used to sit, they used to cry, all those participants, who used to, his students who used to attend, and they used to weep, they used to cry upon Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, when you see these statements from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he says that every eye will be crying on the day of judgment. Illa thalathatu ayun. Exception are three eyes. First says, Ainun bakat min khashiyatillah. An eye that has cried in the due to the fear of Allah. And an eye that has been protected from all the maharam and the haram of Allah Tabarakwatala. And an eye that has not slept or that has been kept awake in the way of Allah. So these three eyes, they will be happy on the day of judgment. So an eye that has cried in the fear of Allah, an eye that has kept itself safe from the haram of Allah, and an eye that has kept awake all night in the way of Allah. So these eyes have to be protected. And especially an eye, كُلُّ عَيْنٍ بَاكِيَةٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ says every eye will be crying except for that eye that has cried for Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. So every eye will weep, but an eye that has wept for Hussein will not weep on the day of judgment. Now such a lofty position and rank is for someone who cries for Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, when we see statements from Imam al Rida alayhi salam, one of them says, Yabn Shabib, it's quite a lengthy one. I'll just quote you one, one phrase of it. One, say, Imam, Imam al Rida alayhi salam says to his uh, companion, his name is Yabn, his son of Shabib. Imam says, O oh son of Shabib, in Bakayt al Hussein alayhi salam, hatta tasira dumu'uka ala khaddayk. When you cry for Hussein alayhi salam and your tears they roll down your cheeks, says, Ghafar Allah laka kulla dhambin aznabta. All the sins that you have committed, Allah forgives all of them. May they be little, may they be a lot. All of them Allah forgives just for that one tear that rolled down your eyes on your cheeks and that is in the grief and sorrow of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam. He further says that in Sarraka and Takuna Mana Fid Darajat al Ula, if you want to be with us in the highest and the loftiest positions of the heaven, says Fahzan li Huznina wa Frah li Farahina, you be sad in our sorrows, you be happy in our joys. You'll be in, with us in the highest levels and the stations of the heaven. Now, these questions may come to your mind that crying for Abu Abdullah al Hussein has such magnificent effects. How is that? How is it possible? It has some attachments to it, and one must be a friend of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, must, be, must have accepted the wilayat of Abu and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. And anyone who cries for Abu Abdullah will see the benefit. May he be the Jew faithful or may he be faithless, they will see the benefits for being associated and crying for Abu Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. Quran says there are two things that 
no matter what the faith of an individual is, he benefits from that. One is Ihsan, doing good. And secondly, Zul, someone who oppresses another, may he be a faithful or a faithless, he will see the consequences of that, definitely. Likewise, doing good, someone who does good for, uh, to someone, faithful or faithless, he will be rewarded. And that is what Allah says, Hal jaza'u l-ihsan illa l-ihsan is the reward of good but good. And Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam applies this on a mu'min, on a kafir, on a good, on a sinner and say that a kafir, a drunk, a gangster does good, he will benefit. Heaven may not be given to them as a reward but he will benefit from other benefits that Allah ta'ala has. Now this crying and mourning and weeping for Abu Abdullah and Hussain has a similar effect. There's a book written by Shaheed Dast Ghaib and the name of the book is Dastan Haye Shagif which means that <clears throat> amazing stories have been mentioned. He writes this incident in that book, says that in India uh, his, uh, his, um, uh, one of these Hindus he died and as their custom is they took him for cremation cremated him for all day and they say that the entire body it got turned to ashes his hand and his chest did not they were amazed that how come we burnt and we tried everything and it doesn't take that long for a body to turn into ashes and how come this body hasn't and then when they analyzed one of them said that we don't know uh, about the whereabouts or what his faith was that but that what we did notice throughout his life is that he participated in the matam and in the lamenting in the aza of Abu Abdullah and Hussein and he used to use his hand to beat his chest in sorrow and in grief of Sayyid al-Shuhada. So a hand that has got connected to Abu Abdullah and Hussein and that chest that has got connected to Abu Abdullah and Hussein, that doesn't burn. And then they say that we cannot uh, uh, cremate him, so you take him and bury him in the graveyard of the Muslims. We feel that he is a Muslim and that's the reason. So that happens as a result of this excessive bond and love that a person has towards Abu Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. In this grand creation of Allah wa ta'ala, in a hadith Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says that al-bakka'un khamsa, those who wept, in this grand creation of Allah, they are five. First, Prophet Adam alayhi salam, Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, Fatima Salamullahi Alayha and finally it's Imam Sajjad Alayhi Salam. Now these five personalities they cried so much. Now Prophet Yaqub he cried in the during the loss of Prophet Yusuf Alayhi Salam. He cried for 40 days as a result of which <clears throat> As a result of which he had lost his sight, his eyes went white. And then Prophet Yaqub, Prophet Adam also cried uh, for Tawbah and uh, Prophet Yusuf also. Then we have Hazrat Fatima sallallahu alayha. She cried in, uh, for her father after... She cried for uh, after Rasulullah so much in those uh, uh, in those ninety days or in those seventy days, seventy five days or ninety five days after Rasulullah so much that she got enlisted into those Bakkain. And then we've got Prophet Ishaq also. He used to cry due to the fear of the Day of Judgment. And then we have Imam Sajjad alayhi salam who cried for forty years for Karbala. 
and he also is among those who is among the Bakain and someone who got enlisted in the in, in this list of Bakain in the shortest time is Hazrat Fatima Salamullahi Alaiha. Now it is the night of the first and we'll talk a little bit about the how this whole tragedy unfolds and how it ends up into Ashura. So very briefly the history of Karbala and that is the departure from Medina and to understand the aims of Sayyid al-Shahda alayhi salam one should know the chains of events that led to this historical unfolding. The incidents, the meetings that Imam has, his letters and then the speeches he gave, some historical background needs to be known. Now today the political atmosphere, that is lack of security, safety will be discussed and the reason why the Imam, he stood his talks with Muhammad Hanafiya, his brother, his, uh, his meeting with Umm Salama and that is the wife of the Prophet and all of them uh, en route to Karbala from Medina. On the 26th of Rajab, the year 60 after Hijrah, it is the day when Muawiyah, he enters the hell, that is the day when he dies. And a very dangerous environment was there in, um, for Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. And on the night of the 28th of Rajab, which was Thursday, Imam with his family, he quickly sets off from Medina, the witnesses yeah, he witnesses, uh, and all, all these witnesses, they prove that his life was in danger and the atmosphere was very dangerous. And throughout, Imam was reciting this ayah, That is, he left, the, that's the ayah regarding Prophet Musa السلام, where he was uh, fearful and also vigilant and he left the city and he was saying that Rabbi Najini min al qawm al zalimin Allah save me from this wrongdoing lot. Says Imam Hussain alayhi salam also was reciting the same ayah that Prophet Musa had recited. Now Quran says that Prophet Musa alayhi salam he fled from Egypt at, in a night in a very fiery situation. Imam Hussain also he left Medina. And this ayah is a proof that he wasn't safe there. Another quote we have, and in the maqatil that are recited on the on the day of Ashura, there it says that ما كان من أهل بيت أشد خوفا منا حين خرجنا من المدينة says no أهل بيت was ever such scared and in such dangerous situation as us when we when when we left Medina. Now the reason for this insecurity was that Muawiyah had advised his son Yazid that in your rule four men they will create problems and you be very vigilant. Now instructions of the father Muawiyah to his son Yazid. He says that first Abdullah bin Umar he is the son of the second Khalifa and then Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr son of the first Khalifa Abdullah bin Zubair and then Hussein ibn Ali says that these four people they are the ones who may cause problems for you so be very vigilant so don't mess with them then he says that Abdullah bin Umar the son of the first Khalifa and Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr the son of the, uh, the first Khalifa then you can tempt them you can offer them and you can take them on board Abdullah bin Zubair and Hussein ibn Ali says will never agree with you and they will never swear allegiance with you. So don't be after getting their, their, their allegiance. Abdullah bin Zubair, he says that no matter where he goes in the world, he will be accessible to you. You can easily get hold of him. He will have no standing. He has no standing and he cannot unite people and people will not even cluster and gather with him. Then says Muawiyah, the father, to his son Yazid, says Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam, Beware, he will never be with you, he will never approve you, 
and uh, uh, act in a way that he does not oppose you. Now, this was the policy of Muawiyah for 10 years of his rule, and he worked in a way that Imam also could not object. He, he did not. That is how he went through throughout his rule. But Yazid, um, some exclusive uh, uh, peculiarities he had in him, always drunk, hence he was never in his senses. He sought advice from the Jews and the Christian, Christians who were around him. And then the reason for that is because the apostle, the treaties that he had signed, they had signed between uh, the Jews and the Christians had signed with Islam. They had excessive hate and disgust towards the Prophet. That's the reason why he sought help and advice from those Jews and the Christians. In one of the advices, a letter be written to Walid bin Atada, the governor of Medina. He wrote uh, from Yazid ibn Muawiyah to Amir al muminin the governor of Medina. Upon the receipt of this letter, without delay, uh, I want you to do, take allegiance from the following three. And who are they? And if they deny, behead them. First, take allegiance bayat from Hussein ibn Ali. Abdullah bin Umar and Abdullah bin Zubair. So no mention of Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr, the son of the first Khalifa. So it seems that uh, he wasn't uh, he, he he had already died. Now from the contents of this letter, it is understood that Imam's life was in danger, and the atmosphere was extremely dangerous. Walid bin Ataba summoned Imam for bayat. It was midnight on the 27th of Rajab. Imam knew the consequences and he says that Hussein, if he wants to give allegiance to someone, it's not going to be in the hiding and behind the back and away from the people. It has to be during the day and amidst the people and in the light. And on the 28th of Rajab, Imam, he left Medina. Now, when he's departing to Medina, Imam has three meetings. The first meeting is with his brother, Muhammad bin Hanafiya. Muhammad bin Hanafiya, he is the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali alayhi salam, and the mother is Khawla Hanafiya, and she is the daughter of Qais ibn Jafar. His family name, surname, is from the mother's tribe, a very strong man, trusted by his father, participated in many battles, uh, during the time of Amir al muminin and in the battles of Siffin and Jamal, he played a very important role, portrayed his long, great loyalty to Abba Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. And after the shahadat of Amir al muminin alayhi salam, a, a few people, they switched to the imamates of, uh, of uh, Muhammad Hanafiya, saying that he is the awaited Mahdi that Muhammad bin Hanafiya, so he has not died and he is in hiding. Now this is the opinion of those people and this lot they are known as uh, Kaysaniyya and they believe that he will return, that is Muhammad Hanafiya will return. Now Imam spoke to this exalted brother Muhammad bin Hanafiya in his first meeting and says that to you and your household is all my sincere support, Muhammad Hanafiya says. An Imam then said, and how do you portray this loyalty? He replied, you are the most respectful and the most honorable and the most deserving before me. And my humble opinion to you, Abba Abdullah al Hussein, will be that Muawiyah has died, distance from Yazid, uh, Yazid's bayat, and send your representatives to all parts of the Islamic world and inform your opinion to them and if they unanimously accept officially, inform your imamat and your leadership. And if there was a dispute and they did not agree, nothing would lessen uh, your greatness and your virtue. But I fear that people would dispute, some would accept, some would deny. Now the two would fight. And that, I, that what I do suggest is that imam... He prayed for him and then may Allah grant every good to you for all your well wishes towards us, the Ahlul Bayt. Now when we study the history of Karbala, we see that Muhammad bin Hanafiya 
is not with the Imam in Karbala. There are two possibilities over here. One of them is that Imam had instructed him to stay in Medina. The second possibility that uh, that ulama, like Allah Mahili, he has mentioned this, says that in the letter that he replies to Sayyid Mahna, says the reason why uh, Muhammad Hanafi uh, was not in Karbala, he had to stay back in Medina, is because uh, <clears throat> in these battles he, he was so good looking and so smart and very um, strong and brave. He was jinxed by those magicians or whatever those uh, people of that time were. As a result of which he ha he was paralyzed and uh, um, he was ill. So he couldn't participate. That's the reason why Imam did not take him to Karbala. He stayed back in Medina. So that was the first meeting with his half-brother, Muhammad bin Hanafiya. The second meeting Imam has prior to leaving Medina is with his other half-brother, Umar Atraf. He is also the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. And when he, when he got to Umar Atraf, when he got to know that Imam is setting off, leaving Medina, and said, I heard my brother, Abba, Abba Muhammad Hassan ibn Ali, that our father had said, and there was a sob in his throat, and he couldn't continue to talk. His eyes were filled with tears. Here Abba Abdullah Hussein says to his brother that you heard from your, from our father that I and you heard from Imam Mushtaba that I will be killed. Imam replied, do you think that I do not know? I know that and I'm aware that the divine decree is such that I have to submit. Now the third meeting that Imam has before he leaves Medina is with Umm Salama. Umm Salama, a very honorable lady and she is among the first immigrants to travel to Yemen with Ja'far bin Abu Talib and her husband is martyred. She returns to Mecca and uh, later moves to Medina. Then Rasulullah marries her. She is among the most sincere and devotees of Hazrat Fatima. And in this issue of Fidak also, she went to the usurpers, to the Rasibin, and witnessed uh, in favor of Hazrat Fatima. In reply, they said, witness of a woman is not accepted. And in reply, Hazrat Zahra said, that is, uh, this is that very lady uh, for whom the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam has said that she is among those heavenly ladies. And even her witness was not accepted. Now, in this meeting that Abba Abdullah and Hussein has prior to leaving Medina, here, when he comes and meets Umm Salama, he addresses her as Ya Umm. Now, Imam gives her a note and then says uh, that the, his wasiya also, that whosoever comes after me to you first and asks for this note, which is my will and wasiya, he will be the Imam after me. So here we understand that the first witness for the imamat of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam is Umm Salama. That when Imam Sajjad after the tragedy of Karbala and then when they come to Medina and he comes straight to Umm Salama and then he addresses her as Ya Ummah just like Abu Abdullah and Hussein addressed her as Ya Ummah mother and says that I've come to uh, take the, the the will my dad had given to you, my father had given to you. And then when, and no one else knew that Imam Hussein has given a will and wasiya to Umm Salama. When Imam comes, and Imam Hussein alayhi salam had also mentioned that whosoever comes to you and wants, and seeks this wasiya, know that he is the Imam after me. So from among the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, Umm Salama is uh, the first witness to the imamat of Imam Sajjad alayhi salatu wassalam. Now this was a little bit regarding the background of the departure of uh, Abu Abdullah al Hussein, and that is moving towards from Medina to Mecca and then he wears the ihram for Hajj but then he had to abandon that ihram and leave that place because that honor and sanctity 
of the you know, of Masjid Al Haram, and that Haram was such that Imam did not want that to be polluted by a bloodshed because he knew that those people who are against him they don't want him and they don't care where that bloodshed is going to be. So protecting the honor and the sanctity of the Haram, Imam also abandoned his Ihram and he left. Now it is the night of the first of Muharram and we will get permission from Hazrat Fatima Salamullahi Alayha. So the first tear that we will shed is in the Muslimiyat of Hazrat Fatima Salamullahi Alayha, who is in reality the mother of Ashura. So if we cry for Hussein and Abba Abdullah for all these days, but she is the mother of Ashura. More has to be, she, more tears have to be shed for her. Now we see that so many questions come to our mind. That is, Imam Amirul Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salatu was salam, did he not know that if Fatima, she gets up and she opens the door, she will be brutally attacked and she will have all those fatal wounds. It is our appeal that the death and the shahadat certificate of every individual is signed by the imam. So he is that imam of that time. Did he not know? Does he not have to sign that shahadat certificate of Hazrat Fatima? That attack also that takes place on the house of Wahi. She opened the door. And one of the other beautiful things that we see there in Medina and over here in Karbala, so much of a resemblance and similarity is there. Here Amirul Mu'mineen is present and then she goes and opens the door. And there Abu Abdullah and Hussein, he takes the women and children also with him. So one of the reasons that we see for that is so that the world sees generations to come after Karbala that what a detestable lot they were who had no mercy to women, who had no mercy to children and how they brutally killed those children on the day of Ashura, how those earrings were snatched from those daughters of Ahlul Bayt how those tents were burnt down where all these women and children live and then how waters were abandoned that never happened before. So it was that man own Abu Sufyan who abandoned water in the battle of uh, Badr and then it was uh, his son Muawiyah who abandoned in the battle of Siffin and his grandson Yazid who did that in the battle of Karbala. Now when we look into the Masaib, one of the statements that we have from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says that the afflictions that we that were seen in Karbala, they were great, they were massive. In less than a day, everything perished. So many from among the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they got killed. But then when he says that, when I look into the Masaib of Amirul Mu'mineen, Ali alayhi salam, says there in Medina, the Masaib, they are abha wa amar, more painful and very brutal. Now, Hazrat Fatima, salam alayhi, alayha, when she is wounded, and it is the last days of her life, the two, they come and say that, Ya Ali, we haven't come, we haven't seen Fatima ever since she's fallen ill. We want to come and see her. Amirul Mu'mineen says, I'll ask her if she allows, yes. Now this noble lady, when Amirul Mu'mineen comes and says that they want to meet you, do you allow? She says, al bayt baytuk, ya Ali, this house is yours. And women, they are obedient to their husbands to whatever decisions they make. And then she says, okay, if you want to come, you can come. They come to see Hazrat Fatima. They greet her with the salam and she does not reply. She turns away in their presence and sits in a way. And then they, they start crying. The first one starts crying. And then she says, did you not hear that on that day, 
the prophet he summoned both of you past midnight and you two came they said yes and then she says do you remember what the prophet said to you she they said yes what was that rida fatima min ridaya the prophet said that the contentment of fatima is my contentment وَسَخَتِ فَاطِمَةً مِنْ سَخَتِي That whosoever disrespects her, hurts her, has hurt me. فَمَنْ أَحَبَّ فَاطِمَةً إِبْنَتِي أَحَبَّنِي Whosoever loves my daughter Fatima has indeed loved me. وَمَنْ أَرْضَى فَاطِمَةً فَقَدْ أَرْضَانِي Whosoever makes her happy. And seeks her contentment and rida has indeed sought my rida and my contentment. Waman aschata fatima fakad aschatani. Whosoever has hurt her has indeed hurt me. Did you not hear the Prophet say that to you? Then why did you do this? Then why did you attack? And it was again when we see these masaib of the day that unfolded in Medina, in the house of Fahi, one of the statements after Hazrat Fatima, we see that Amir al-Mu'mineen on and off, he cries. And there he says that these, and his eyes were filled with tears. And when inquired, Ya Ali, what is the reason for this cry of yours? He says, Shakkara lahu darbatan darabaha Fatima bisawt fmatat wa fi adudiha atharun says that Qunfuz, the slave of the second, says he came and he hit Fatima with that cover of the sword and says that as a result of that hitting of his disrespect he showed to Hazrat Fatima, he was rewarded, he was thanked, he was praised and none of his benefits were reduced, none of his wages or salaries were reduced, everything remained intact. And then he was thanked and lauded for lashing Fatima. She dies due to that beating and the wounds she saw. The bruises and swelling on her arm were such that as if something has been tied to his to her to her arm. Now here Amir al-Mu'mineen says that Fatima, she had a wasiyya. Amir al-Mu'mineen was in, mas in the masjid with, um, and his age at that time is 32. A young man, strong, brave. He is informed that his son, the two sons, Imam Hassan and Hussein, they come and say that father, mother, she has deteriorated. He comes, he stands up to, uh, to, uh, to rush to, uh, to his house. Now the Maqatil, they say that his abai got tangled in his feet. He falls to the ground. Twice he falls, three times he falls to the ground. On his face, comes home and sees that Fatima, she has departed. Now here... Imam alayhi salam, the ziyarat that we recite when we go to Najaf, we say that As-salamu alayk, ya waliyallah, anta wal awwalu mazloom, that you are the first oppressed, wa awwalu man ghusil haqqo, the first one whose haqq and whose right was seized. In one of these reports that we have, that in the last moments of Hazrat Fatima's life, when Amir al-Mu'mineen comes from the masjid to the, by, the, by her side, says that with that broken arm of hers, Amir al-Mu'mineen was shedding tears by Hazrat Fatima. She brings her hand by the eyes of Amir al-Mu'mineen, wipes his tears off with her hand, and then wipes that tear onto her chest. Amir al-Mu'mineen says that, Fatima, why did you do that? She says, Anta awwalu madloom. You are the first oppressed, Ya Ali. You are the first oppressed. And I've heard my father say that the tear 
of a Muslim is tabarruk. And I want to meet my Lord with this tabarruk on me, and that is the tear of Ali, the most oppressed. Now here, the incidents that unfold in Medina, she has a wasiya that Ali, I want you to shroud me at night, wash me at night, bury me at night. No trace of my grave remain. No one ever knows where I've been buried. And especially those, they don't, they must not participate in my funeral. They must not attend. They must not be part of it. Amirul Mu'mineen washes the pure body of Hazrat Fatima with the help of Asma bint Omais. Here, Asma, she pours the water. Amir al Mu'mineen washes the body, says to everyone, be very quiet, be very gentle, no one raise their voice. It is the wasiyah of Fatima that no one should find out. Now when Asma wants to pour water, says, Beris Abe Ravan Asma, Beruye Jisme Adhare Zahra, Vali Ahiste Ahiste says Asma, pour water on Zahra, but be very gentle, be very quiet. Even those droplets make no sound so that no one finds out that what has happened in this house. All of a sudden, Amir al muminin he screams. Here, yeah, Asma says, Ya Ali, what happened? Where, was it not you who was inviting us all to sabr and patience? She says that Zahra, she had hidden this wound from me, this wound that Mal'oon he had hit on her body. Now when the body got prepared and she was shrouded, Amirul Mu'mineen says to his two sons, Halummu tazawwaju min ummikum. Children, come and say farewell to your mother. This is the last meeting that you are going to have with your mother and after this you will not see them again, see her again. The children, they come and they plead um, and they cry here on one hand, one side it is uh, Abba Abdullah al Hussein. on the other hand it is Imam Mujtaba alayhi salam, Nahi Amirul Mu'mineen and all those who witness that they say that, oh, they say that, Ushidullah innaha qad hannat wa annat wa maddat yadayha wa dhammat huma ila sadriha malayyat says that we saw that her hands that were tied in her shroud, she brought her two hands out and she hugged the two sons. And then here the angels from the skies, they they raised their cry that, Ya Ali, take those children away. As over here in the skies, there is this moaning, lamenting and crying in the aza of Hazrat Zahra. Ya Abul Hassan, irfa'ahuma anha falaqad abkiya wallah malaikat as sama by God, the angels of the skies, all of them that are in Aza and crying. Amir al Mu'mineen brings the body with just a few of those Bani Hashim who were there, lays her to rest, and then says, Assalamu alaykum, Ya Rasulullah, Anni wa'an ibnatika nazilati fi jawarik. Salam be upon you, Ya Rasulullah, from me. And I am returning this amana that you had given to me. Forgive me, Ya Rasulullah. I am returning not as you had given to me. Now this Zahra, who is emerging, who is embarking on this journey and will be meeting you, is not the same. This is a broken, shattered Zahra who is coming to you and she will tell you what this nation did to me and to us and what unfolded upon us after you. Ala la'natullah ala al-qawm al-zalimeen wa sayya'lamu al-lazheena zalamu ayyamu al-qaladin yanqalaboon. Ilahi bihaq al-zahra wa abiha wa ba'liha wa baniha wa sirr al-mustawda'i fiha ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Allahumma ahyina hayat Muhammadin wa al Muhammad. Wa amitna mamat Muhammadin wa al Muhammad. 
اللهم ارزقنا في الدنيا زيارة محمد وآل محمد وفي الآخرة شفاعة محمد وآل محمد إلهي The tears that were shed here in love and in mahabbat of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Make them an asset of ours in our graves, in our barzakh, in our qiyamah. Our children to be enlisted among the best of Muslims. Ilahi, all those who are ill and ailing, who have requested for du'as, grant them shifa. All those who have departed, Allah, forgive them, elevate their ranks. Hasten in the return of our Imam, our Master, our Hujja, and count us all among the best of his servants and those who seek shahadat in his service. وَسُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ وَسَلَامًا عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد